What's up, everybody, and welcome back to part two, Aeration Boogaloo. I don't know. I, I don't know if that really works. Doesn't matter. So today we're going to get into some fun stuff, and I think that you're really going to like the direction that this is going because a lot of people ask, what happens if you do mechanical aeration and liquid aeration together? Hmm. Let's find out. Okay, so before we get into this video, I need you to do a couple of things for me if you haven't done it already. Number one, go ahead and subscribe. I think that is super important. Hit the like button, share the video if you do like it, and you know, all of that good kind of stuff. It really does help. The second thing that I need you to do, if you haven't already, is watch the first video, part one of this series. It's going to be three total videos, but jump back. You can click on the icon here and it'll take you to the part one because it might be important for you to kind of find out what we've already discussed. So today I want to dig into some stuff that I think is pretty cool and, and fun to understand about what happens when you do a combination of mechanical aeration and aerate. And again, I can only talk about aerate because it's my product. It's the one that was studied. Uh, I don't have any other liquid aeration products that were put through this trial. It was just something for us to go through and find out more information about and ultimately provide that information to everybody out there. Further than that, this is going to be a two-year study, and this is all the first-year data. And so we're kind of running through this as a preliminary scale to give everybody an idea of what we saw the first year. I want to make a couple comments here about soil in general, and this is something that I think is, is valuable for everybody just to get a little bit of a better general understanding. Soil is very much alive, and it's shifting, and it's moving, and it's always in this sort of constant state of flux. And the reality is it's sort of trying to return to its natural state. So everything we do to it kind of has a time limit, an expiration date, if you will, on when it's going to sort of run out and the soil is going to, I guess, fight back in a sense and try to restore its natural state. And honestly, that can be applied to really anything that we do. You know, you can't just fertilize once and expect to have a beautiful lawn. You have to consistently do it. You can't just water once and expect to have the grass look fantastic you got to keep doing it. You know, there's all of these things that are consistent steps in order to maintain healthy turf and also healthy soil. Another way to kind of look at that is look at liming or pH corrections in general. This is something that you consistently have to do. And at some point it gets to where maybe you can take a season or two seasons off, but ultimately what that soil was made of is going to start to dominate again. And you just constantly have to be doing adjustments. So this is definitely true with aeration as well. This is not a permanent fix. It's not as if you can do one single aeration and be done with it. And that's also the same for applying liquid aeration. This isn't a one-time deal. Soil is fighting back constantly on our intervention. It's just, it's just not going to stay how we are trying to augment it. That's kind of our job. We're sort of like, a, in a way, like urban farmers, just sort of taking care of our crop on our own land, and we have to tend to our soil and do all the things to be responsible. The next thing I wanna talk about here real quick is how these measurements for this particular video uh, were taken so that everybody gets an idea of, of the way this works. A soil penetrometer was used to take readings in pounds per square inch down deep in the subsoil. And one thing that was noted by the researcher is that while aerate alone had an impact in the top two inches of soil, getting down to the subsoil is a little bit of a different story. Since we are just applying liquid topically, it would take more to get it down deeper into the soil to make a greater impact. The other suggestion was maybe more carrier volume could be used and the water would help drag it down deeper as well. But for us, one of the questions that has come up over the years is what happens if you do a mechanical aeration and then you also spray aerate over the top of it? So we decided to put that through as a rep as well. The penetrometer readings were taken uh, through every single plot that we did, uh, and it was measured out four times during the course of the year. So it was measured the first day of application, uh, day 28, day 56, uh, day 85, and day 112 to kind of get everything uh, organized and put into position so that we could see how it averaged out over time. So the way a soil penetrometer works is it actually has to go down and hit some pretty major resistance. And usually that's that's kind of farther down in the soil. And once you start to get readings above 300 PSI, 
root growth becomes majorly restrictive if it will even reach down into that zone as well. So breaking apart subsoil for deeper roots in agriculture is super important. And obviously it can be for turf as well, but oftentimes uh, on a home lawn, this is getting down into depths that really don't matter too much. So the interesting thing about a mechanical aerator is that say we can pull a full four inch plug. Well, that impact can have a deeper impact in the soil by causing fractures further down. And so there can be uh, more of a compaction release even deeper than that four inch zone. It could go down uh, two inches, four inches, a foot. There, there is sort of a fracturing that happens and it will start to relieve some compression down deeper in the soil. So what we're gonna run over here is the day one, day of application, uh, PSI readings from the penetrometer first. Now, the top number that you're going to see on here, that is the uh, control area. This is where the soil started just in the control section and where nothing was applied all season. The second number on here is the mechanical aeration alone. And the third number on here is the mechanical plus aerate plot. So to give you an idea on how this rep worked, we did it like this. Obviously the control got nothing on that day one. And then we only did mechanical aeration on the two other plots. Now we didn't start applying air rate until day 28 and it got a six ounce rate on day 28 and I got another six ounce rate on day 56. So we can kind of get a general idea of how the soil looked on day one. And there is kind of some different readings in just between those plots. And there's no way they can ever be the same because like I said, soil is constantly shifting. So right out of the gate, if you just take a look at the averages on, on these numbers right here, the, there's about a seven and a half percent difference on uh, the area where we were going to be running the trial for the aerate by comparison to the one where the mechanical aeration is. So keep that in mind as we go through this study. It was starting out with a little bit less of a reading. Okay, so as we went into day 28 and did the first application of aerate, we now had a completely different set of readings. And you can see that the control section is starting to go up. Now, one of the reasons for that is soil moisture could have gone down during that length of time because now we're moving into more heat and so perhaps water wasn't getting down there and therefore some of the subsoil compaction was going to automatically increase over the time. Now this should happen across the board, but if you look at the mechanical section, you can see we had about a 13% reduction in total soil compaction. And then further down uh, on the day where we've applied the air rate, we actually had about an 18 and a half percent reduction down uh, deeper there. And now we're going to go out to the day 56 number and take a look at that. The control section has increased in subsoil hardness by 28%. Now you can see that there hasn't been a whole lot of a change just in the mechanical section. That's still running about a 14% reduction. It was 13% on the 28 day. But now you look down into the part where we have applied aerate with the mechanical. Now we're looking at about a 21% reduction. So what started to happen after this is everything began to sort of climb back out as the season was moving on. And uh, those numbers sort of continued to increase in hardness uh, as, as it went on. So by day 85, where there were some really cool um, measurements as far as water infiltration and things like that, and you can see that from the previous video, it was starting to tell a little bit of a different story. You could see that the ground, the subsoil ground was beginning to set up a little bit more. So by this time, the control section was now increased in hardness by 43%. And again, this has to do more with like water down deeper in the soil, not quite making it down there. And so compaction was increasing. For the mechanical alone, it was starting to climb back up and get pretty close to where it started. So you can see by this reading, we're only down now by about a 2% reduction in compaction from its first day. Interestingly enough though, with the mechanical and the air rate applied together, we were still holding roughly a 20% reduction. That's pretty good because it's still holding very strong. Now let's move out to the final measurements of the trial. By the final measurements of the trial, the control section had increased to 56% over where it started. And again, I'm gonna say it over and over, this is likely because there was less water down deeper in the soil. And obviously if it dries up down there, it's going to be a lot harder. But this is something to pay attention to because that means that the water level is much higher up in the soil and the roots are only gonna travel as far as that goes. So by this time, at the end of the trial, the mechanical aerated section had returned back to where it had started and even maybe a little bit harder, but I would say it's within a margin of error uh, measuring 365 PSI. So, uh, you know, for all intents and purposes, I would say it basically just reset. We, we had an impact through most of the growing season, but it was climbing back up and sort of hardening out as time went on for the very same reasons though. But because we had kind of fractured the soil and opened things up, water was able to travel down deeper so the compaction never reset as much as the area that didn't have anything done to it. 
But the interesting part is even though there was a mild increase between uh, day 85 and day 112 on the mechanical plus air rate section, it was kind of holding again within a margin of error, still kind of hanging out with about an 18.5% reduction in subsoil compaction. I'm going to say that that's statistically pretty phenomenal when you start to see how much the reduction took place on that particular rep with two applications applied with the mechanical aeration. So as far as the initial thoughts of saying what would happen if we got the product down deeper, here's something that alludes to that is that when the product was actually down deeper in the soil and it was able to work its way down, it was still able to relieve compaction even at a greater level down below. And now none of these readings that were in here uh, would restrict root growth. We kept it under 300 PSI down deep in the soil. So there is a major impact happening when you take a look at it from that aspect. So in this case, it really is the best of both worlds. You can see how the mechanical aeration has its time and what it does through the course of the season. And we talked about its root growth in the prior video and some of the other benefits. And you now you can see what some of those deeper soil readings were compared to the control. Well, now by adding in aerate into this as well, we actually have a relief of compaction down deeper, really, really significant one, and it held itself within that sort of 20% range through pretty much the whole year. Now, the most interesting thing for me and where I'm getting excited is to see where these readings are coming into the new year and how they maintain going through this next course of the study. But what would this really do for anybody out there? So. If you have severely compacted soil, really poorly draining soil, and you know you're going to have to do some level of mechanical intervention, great. This is something that could help you even further because you can see throughout the course of time that you're going to have that compaction return. Now, is that 100% constant? Not yet. However, there are studies out there that show even over a multitude of aeration events over multiple years that basically the readings on compaction end up the same at the end of the trial as when they started. However, if this is something that can hold true over time to where you can be applying the two together and get this great of a result, then now we're talking about some serious changes in the deep soil that are going to help you get greater plant root growth help to have more water flow, more air circulation, and really overall just a better, healthier soil. Now, again, I wanna make sure that you're subscribed and you're part of this and you're getting to see what's happening. And uh, we're gonna get into part three before too long. I wanna give everybody a chance to digest this, ask questions, leave comments. I'd be more than happy to share anything else that maybe we didn't get to cover in this video. And uh, we'll just continue on this journey. So thank you all so much. I'll talk to you real soon. See ya.